Let's talk about saturation and my two favorite ways of achieving it, and more importantly, when I use one over the other. So saturation, in the context of audio production, refers to the process of adding harmonic and dynamic complexity to a sound. Historically, it was a byproduct of pushing analog gear beyond its limits, but today it's a creative tool for adding warmth, character to digital recordings. Number one, tube saturation. Tube saturation is the result of driving vacuum tubes, producing a harmonically rich and musically pleasing form of distortion or saturation. Tube saturation is often celebrated for its warmth and smoothness, but you can also get presence out of tube saturation and edginess, so it depends on what you're looking for. And there are often two different types of tubes used for saturation. You have triodes and pentodes. So for example, if you're looking for a more warm and fat and subtle type of saturation to sort of warm up your low end, I would go for a triode tube because they give more even harmonics. And on the other hand, if you want a less subtle saturation, more edgy and more obvious type of distortion, I would go for a pentode type tube as they give more odd and third harmonic type saturation. And here's a classic example of a pento tube being driven by an electric guitar. So one of, one of my favorite tools for adding tube saturation is BB tubes from Waves. And apart from sounding really cool and great, uh, it's also super simple, and that's what I love about it. So you've got two really big knobs here, and one is adding even harmonic type saturation, and the other one is odd uh, harmonic and third harmonic type saturation. And that's what the names of each knob also suggests. One is more beautiful and subtle, and the other one is more beast and, and aggressive. So let's hear the difference between the two in action, so you can hear what I'm talking about here. And I'm gonna show it on a bass. Number two, tape saturation. Tape saturation occurs when magnetic tape is recorded at levels that exceed its linear capacity, creating a distinct compression and harmonic distortion together, which is often referred to as tape saturation. And this combination is really unique to tape. The way it sort of compresses the sound and saturates it at the same time, giving you a certain glue factor that people love. And this results in a fuller, more cohesive and dynamically rich sound. And the glue factor makes elements of a mix feel more unified. So that's what I tend to use tape saturation for more than anything else. But what a lot of people forget is that when you work with tape saturation, there's more to it than just adding any random tape machine to the sound. You know, every tape machine is different, every tape model is different. Uh, every tape speed will give you different results and there's a lot of different controls you can play with whether it's a plug-in or real tape. So I really recommend spending a lot of time uh, testing out a few different tape machine plugins and different different tape models because oftentimes especially you know Waves J37 tape machine allows you to change the tape in the plugin which is really cool. You know, also try playing with different tape speeds and bias settings and all this kind of stuff and you'll get a much more interesting tape saturation. So before ending this video, I'm gonna play around a little bit with this tape plugin, the J37. And when I do that, just pay attention to what happens to the snare when I change tape speed. There should be a slight difference in EQ of the overall sound when I go down in tape speed to 7.5 IPS. But before doing that, I would love to invite you to my Patreon community where you get access to live streams, mixing challenges, exclusive content, and a chat room as well. So I hope to see you there. Everybody agrees it's fabulous. Just fat.